Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisance to Sogla Shishra Prabhupada. Welcome to the Easter morning Bhagavatam class. This morning we continue with Shimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, Verse 33. The chapter is entitled, The Pandavas Retire Timely. We are very happy to have His Holiness Chandamali Swami with us. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you and all glories to Shri Prabhupada. Haribo. Haribo Maharaj. And it's all yours. Thank you. And the Suya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Prithyanu Srutyadana Dajayoditam. Nasam yadunam bhagavan gatim chitam. Nanta bhakya bhagavatta hoksa jay. Nive sitar. Mur paravrama sam straitaha. Translation Kunti, after overhearing Arjuna telling of the end of the Yadu dynasty and the disappearance of Lord Krishna engaged in the devotional service of the transcendental personality of Godhead with full attention and thus gain release from the course of material existence. Purport. The setting of the sun does not mean the end of the sun. It means that the sun is out of our sight. Similarly, the end of the mission of the Lord on a particular planet or universe only means that he is out of our sight. The end of the Yadu dynasty also does not mean that it is annihilated. It disappears along with the Lord out of our sight. As Maharaj Yudhisthir decided to prepare to go back to Godhead, so all Sukunti decided, and thus she fully engaged herself in the transcendental devotional service of the Lord, which guarantees one a passport for going back to Godhead after quitting this present material body. The beginning of devotional service to the Lord is the beginning of spiritualizing the present body. And thus, an unalloyed devotee of the Lord does not lose all material, loses all material contact in the present body. The abode of the Lord is not a myth, as is thought by the unbelievers or ignorant people. But one cannot reach there by any material means like a Sputnik or Space capsule. One can certainly reach there after leaving this present body, and one must prepare himself to go back to Godhead by practicing devotional service. That guarantees a passport for going back to Godhead, and Kunti adopted it. Om Agyan Kimirandasya Gena Jana Salakaya Taksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurudevena Maha. Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Vayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Svapadanti Kam Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinami Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaudavani Pachari Ne Nirvasesa Sunyavadi Pasyatya De Satarine Panchakalpa Taru Vishya Kripa Sindhu Paeva Chakitanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnavi Vyo Namaho Maha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadar Srivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 the setting of the sun doesn't mean the end of the sun. Hmm. So as the sun rises on the eastern side and disappears on the western side, but always remains in his orbit, the uh, same personality of Godhead performs his activities in all of the material universes one after another. It's like there is always, somewhere in the world, it's always eight o'clock in the morning, no matter where you are, 
you you'll find somewhere that time exists <clears throat> so in the same way the lord goes from universe to universe performing his transcendental activities and bringing with him his devotees many of these devotees who are with him in one universe again reappear to be with the lord again in another universe to perform or to assist him in his pastimes of spreading Sanatana Dharma, eternal religious principles. Uh, Kunti now is seeing that well, the Lord is God, and what else is there to do? To stay in the material world without the Lord, and she is a pure devotee. So she is thinking, what do I need to do now is to simply attain to the spiritual realm, or again, into the association of the Lord. To hear the analogy of a passport has been used twice in the purport. It seems like that when we first uh, begin our devotional service, we are given a passport. And as we are able to enter into the spiritual world, our passport gets stamped. So we are already on their way by engaging in devotional service. But in order to reach perfection, one has to be free. Ayanya sita sunya jnana karma nirabhutam anukulena krishna silanam bhakti uttama divai pum samparo dharma yato bhakti ahoksa jay hoitiki apriyata yatma supersede ti. This bird, these verse, one from uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu by Rupa Goswami. The one from Srimad Bhagavatam by Sutta Goswami both illustrate or indicate what is the qualities and characteristics of pure devotional service. So that pure devotional service has to be unmotivated by any material desire. It has to be for Krishna and the desire to Krishna, or, uh, the desire to please Krishna. And without any desire for one's personal gain. Most people in the world who take up some form of spirituality or religious activity are always looking for some material gain through that. They want to improve their material situation. They want to gain something materially by gaining the uh, devotional service. Or they simply want to be free from material suffering. They're like the Ghanis. <laughs> Or they want to have the power to control material energy to a certain degree. Those who develop mystic power. All of these different desires are still tinged by personal interests, and therefore they disqualify one to go back home back to Godhead. We see the example of uh, Kolovetsu Sridhar. He was simply a banana salesman, and uh, Lord Chaitanya would come to him every day to buy his banana cups, banana leaves, banana plates. And, and uh, he was very satisfied simply uh, selling his wares. And at the same time, he would take 50% of his the income that he received from selling and give it to worship of the Ganges. Um, so he had no material desires. He simply wanted to uh, offer Mother Ganges um, some service. And at the same time, he was always chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Lord Chaitanya used to come and harass him all the time and just uh, bargain with him and somehow heckle him by saying, well, you're, yeah, you know, you're, you're, uh, um, you're, you're, uh, Merchandise is of good quality, but you charge too much. <laughs> and uh, he would always wrangle for a lower price. And uh, Sridhar would say, no, no, if you go anywhere, you'll find this is the best price. And they would go back and forth. After some time, when Lord Chaitanya appeared in the house of Sri Vastakur, he was in the mood of giving complete uh, mercy to anyone and everyone without any 
prerequisite. And he was calling devotees, asking them to accept anything they wanted. <clears throat> it didn't matter what it was. He was just showing his mercy as the Supreme Lord. <clears throat> At one point, Srinivas Pulavesha Sridhar was requested by the Lord to come. And he sent the devotees to get him. And Sridhar came. When Sridhar realized who that banana customer was, and then he fainted in ecstasy. Now he understood it was the same supreme personality of Godhead who he's chanting his holy name. The Lord was very kind and merciful to Sridhar and was very pleased with his unalloyed devotion and wanted to give him some benediction. As the Lord was so profusely offering everything and anything to anyone who asked for it, <clears throat> it didn't matter what it was. Just ask. <clears throat> the Lord was in that magnanimous mood. And uh, when, when, he, when he requested Sridhar to accept something, Sridhar said, I'm happy. There's nothing I need. I'm simply happy to, you know, chant the holy names in there and to uh, serve you by giving you banana cups, banana leaves, <laughs> banana plates. And the Lord was persistent, <clears throat> wanting to give just like in the same case we had Prahlad Maharaj. The Sringadev was persistent in wanting to give Prahlad a benediction. And Prahlad finally decided, all right, the Lord is not giving up. <clears throat> so I'm going to have to accept something just to please him. So he said, I just let me stay in this material world <clears throat> and preach your glories to the unbelievers, to the person, to the ignorant fools. <clears throat> so he, he never asked for anything for himself. Same way when Sridhar, Polovitcher Sridhar was approached and persisted by the Lord, he simply said, I'm happy. Then the Lord started to name things that he could give him. He named many things. You want a nice wife, you want a you want a you know a palace, you want opulence. I can give you opulence on the same level as Indra. And I can even give you a planet if you want. <laughs> yeah, the Lord was so inclined to treat her. My treat her said, my dear Lord, I'm happy. Why do you want to make my life miserable by giving me all these things? <laughs> so this is the reverse. A devotee is not interested in accumulating material things. Well, he's only interested in serving the Lord and pleasing the Lord and associating with other devotees. Uh, the material things that come by way of living in this world will come automatically, as it says in the Srimad Bhagavatam, that happiness comes automatically, just like no one tries to, for distress, and distress also comes automatically. So material gain and material loss are there within one's karma, and one, one doesn't have to endeavor. But when one engages in devotional service, then the Lord takes care of the devotee and provides everything they need. And if they don't get what they, they want, then they realize, I don't need it. <laughs> I'm simply happy to engage in devotional service. And so that is the loving relationship. Therefore, it's a very confidential, intimate relationship between the devotee and the Lord that can now not be understood by the non-devotees. They may see devotees and they may also witness how devotees conduct themselves, but they can never understand a devotee. Because the devotee's mind is always fixed, as a compass is always calculated towards the northern direction. The devotee's mind is always fixed on the lotus feet of the Lord. He wants to chant his holy name. He wants to spread that chanting everywhere and anywhere. So others can be also benefited. He wants to associate with devotees and uh, worship together, uh, exchange loving relationships with other devotees, and and then Tatwa Teham Purna Janmani Naiti Mambeti Surjuna. He knows, she knows at the end of life, when everything is finished, then the gates of the spiritual world are available. So this is real life. This life in this material world is just a, a uh, it's a, it's an, an artha, it's a, it's, it's an anomaly. 
has nothing to do with the soul's existence and it can't give happiness either on the material level either. For those who chase after material things in pursuance or in preference over devotional service are actually ignorant and foolish because they don't know what is, what is the actual value of devotional service. When the ultimate value is one gets to associate with the Lord in the spiritual world or even while one is still in this world, one can feel the presence of the Lord at every minute simply by the, their efforts in devotional service. So Kunti, yeah, she, she's Krishna's aunt. She knows who Krishna is. Although she offered beautiful prayers, we, had, we read about that in the eighth chapter. Um, still, she knows that, that that same nephew is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And uh, she glorifies him in so many different ways. Now that he's gone, her attachment to him is even stronger. And therefore, in the mood of separation, she wants to rejoin the association of the Lord. And therefore, she, she thinks there's nothing else to do but now fix my mind on the lotus feet of the Lord and prepare to go back home and back to Godhead. And we should also think that way, too. Uh, no one is guaranteed so many years in this material world. A long life is not something that is uh, given to you when you come into this world. You may think, you may have gone to astrologers who say that, well, yes, you'll live so many years. This is your astrological uh, destination. But I've known many, many persons who have gone to astrologers and have heard the same thing, but their life was much shorter than the astrologers. So we can't really count on that. We can simply understand that time is short. Let us fix our mind on the lotus feet of the Lord and ultimately find complete satisfaction and happiness. Even though it may somehow for us who still have material desires, we may struggle in order to do that. That struggle is purifying. It's purifying. It's like taking the medicine that cuts away the disease. Well, and the medicine may be a little bitter sometimes, but that doesn't matter because the disease is becoming lessened. And eventually, the patient knows that if they continue under the guidance of the proper doctor, the medicine will eventually work and one will eventually go back home, back to Godhead in this life. It is possible <clears throat> if, one is, if one is very sincere and fixed in devotional service to the Lord. So with the association of devotees and with the practice of Krishna consciousness, one can easily attain the lotus feet of the Lord, which is our natural constitutional position. Nothing foreign from our actual existence. It is who we are. We are eternally Krishna's associate, not in this material world, but in the spiritual world. Just like when we travel, sometimes maybe we travel for a long time, we have a residence somewhere in the material world. We always think, oh, boy, I would like, after some time, I want to get back to my home and just go to my room and just relax and read some books and do what I want to do. So we also understand that in, even a person who travels in this material world also looks for the opportunity to go back to the place where they feel most comfortable. For us, on the spiritual platform, that is our, that is the spiritual world. And as Prabhupada said, unbelievers and ignorant people don't think that that place exists, but that is their, that's what they are. They're simply ignorant. As there is a material world, there is the source of the material world, the spiritual world. And that spiritual world is uh, the, the eternal home of the living entity. Once re one reaches there, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, one does not again return to this birth world of both birth and death, but attains to my abode and eternally. So that is the, uh, that eternal abode is, you know, we should read about it in the fifth, and the first verse, I think it's the, Third Canto, 15th chapter, Srimad Bhagavatam is a nice description 
of the Vaikuntha realm. And there is also in the uh, yeah, in the fifteen description of the kingdom of God. Yeah, so you, you'll go down the page. You'll see it describes you know, a little bit farther down. I think it's a little bit later in the chapter. In the yeah, it says here, starting with verse number fourteen, and all the rest are similar in form. That they all engage in devotional service. Though there are many forests which are auspicious in these forests, the trees are desired trees, and all the seasons they are filled with flowers and fruit. Because everything in Vaikuntha planet is spiritual and personal. The inhabitants fly in airplanes accompanied by wives and concerts, sing, eternally sing the character and activities of the Lord. While singing the glories of the Lord, they derive even the presence of the blooming Madhavi flowers, which are fragrant and laden with honey. King of the bees hums in high pitch. So here we go, a very beautiful description of the kingdom of God. Uh, the different birds, flowers, everything is auspicious. Everything is beautiful. Everyone is happy. And everyone is simply trying to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. And everyone says that of all of the flowers, Tulsi is given special preference by the Lord, who garlands himself with Tulsi flowers. They travel in airplanes, and uh, which are made of various emeralds and gold. And here the description goes on and on and on. This chapter is the a very good insight into Vaikuntha. Of course, even higher than Vaikuntha is Vrindavan, which is more simple, but very, very beautiful in spiritual uh, spiritual qualities. So why stay in this material world where you just have to pay doctor bills <laughs> when you get old? You have to simply, you know, struggle simply to, to get some money to live. And then everybody's trying to take your money, especially the government. In this world, it's a it's a place where everybody is a thief and they're stealing from each other. <laughs> and of course, everybody is already stolen from Krishna, and now they're stealing from each other. So this is the material world. It's not a nice place. Only a fool would like, would want to stay in this place. <laughs> Once they know a little bit, at least en enough, that there is a realm way beyond this existence where it's available. Somebody tells you about a nice place to go on vacation. They give you the brochure, it describes things in detail. Your friend comes back saying, I've been there, and this is what I did. This is, it was such an enjoyable experience. I met so many nice people there. And they go on and on, and it, and it, it sort of excites your interest to go there. So when we read the scriptures and we hear from the, from the pure, pure spiritual teachers, we understand more where we actually belong, <laughs> not in this material. So, so Kunti knows that, and she's fixed her mind on Krishna, and now she's preparing to achieve the eternal destination. Thank you so much, Marjo. Such a really, really sweet class, actually, it's all about. Um, how to get out of this crazy world. I'm going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. <laughs> remember, it's... Remember the rock and roll song that was. <laughs> it's crazy. Right. Is this the last thing we ever do? Remember that song? Probably friction might. I don't know. Is it by the Beatles, Maharaj? No, it, it was, uh, what was it? Death Row Toll. Probably pricks it might not. Get out of this place. If this is the last thing we have to do. <laughs> I'm waiting to see if Friction will say whether he knows the song or not. But yeah, yeah, I do know. Yep, I knew he'll know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's part of the refrain, actually. The fact that's repeated a lot. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, uh, you know, spiritual knowledge comes from different different avenues. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for it, you'll find it in many places. <laughs> Absolutely, man. It's such a crazy world. Would like to ask devotees if you have any questions on this really powerful purport of, you know, about accepting the Lord and that he's not here and then ready to leave, you know, and like Mother Kunti, how, and we know that we've heard so much about her life, always living the life full of calamities. And now that she's not, her hearing that Krishna is not there, she's ready to leave. It was very, very deep verse. And if the voice have any questions, I think I just saw something on the chat, Raj Prabhu, but let me see. Um, <laughs> we got to get out of this place. If it's the last thing we ever do. <laughs> yes, Prabhu. <clears throat> oh, is that the frame, Prabhu? We got to get out of this place. Girl, that's, that's a better life for me and you. Okay. Thank you for sharing that, Prabhu. <laughs> My husband said, yeah. <laughs> so that's. <laughs> Go ahead, Raj Prabhu, with your question, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Marge, I heard in a in in the in when you, we were talking when you were talking through the verse, and it mentioned you mentioned Mother Kunti uh, had resolved to go deep, totally and deep into uh, devotional service, and that would take her back to Godhead. And I remember hearing. Uh, in a, a letter that Srila Prabhupada wrote, that Mother Kunti was an eternal servant in the material realm. So, what does that mean when, when we, when the verse says that she's going back to Godhead? So it seems to be she goes back to Godhead, but she's also serving in the material world probably another material world somewhere to else. Yeah, to associate with Krishna is the spiritual world. She had direct association with the Lord. And whether, as I mentioned, it says, of course, Prabhupada says she's preparing to go back to God. But even if she attains the uh, situation where where Krishna is in another universe, and then that is good as the spiritual world, almost, because they're with Krishna. Wherever, wherever Krishna is, personally, that place, that world is no longer material, spiritual. It says that Mother Earth, when Krishna left the planet, she lamented his disappearance. The Earth would never be the same anymore without him. So simply by his feet touching onto this planet, the whole planet becomes uh, um, becomes energized with spiritual shakti, his presence. And those who had direct association with him, they weren't thinking of going back to God. They were thinking just to serve him and be with him in the material world. For them, that was enough. But then when he left, they wanted to again re regain his association. Same thing happened when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left. His associates couldn't couldn't stay anymore. Many of them focused their mind on the Lord, and in meditation, just disappeared. They had the power to leave the world and go where Lord Chaitanya was. Once once one gets a taste of associating with the Lord, one will one can never accept anything less. <laughs> it's not possible. That's accepting anything less is like the ultimate misery. But because we haven't had that taste, we still accept this material world as being okay. <laughs> once that taste comes, one which is incomparable to any other form of happiness. Uh, and everything else looks pale. Raghunath Das Goswami was also experiencing that when Lord Chaitanya left the world. He was seeing everything as being miserable. 
He said, he even said, Govardhan Hill looks like a gaping, gaping mountain. That's why. <laughs> even the holy places for Raghuna Das Goswami were no longer, uh, you know, a place of happiness because the Lord had gone. This is, this is Mahaprabhu. This is the association of devotees who had those in the, in the presence of the Lord in their life. And they can't live without it. It's not possible. Thank you, Maharaj. If, if, if we haven't had the taste yet, then every, like everybody on this call today must have had experienced something. So is it, perhaps it's something like a little bit of the aroma of the food, but you haven't actually tasted the food yet. Must... Yeah, very good analogy. Yeah. We're getting a little taste here and there. When we chant, when we associate, when we hear and discuss the philosophical teachings in the Bhagavatam. And these, these, it's not, you can't stay in devotional service unless you've gotten something. It may not be continuous, but you know, you need that little taste to keep you going. And even if it's not there, you remember what it was like. And therefore you continue to continue to uh, practice devotional service, wanting that taste to come back again. And it's available. And is it right to be yearning for that taste? Yeah, but yearning means uh, performing the activities by which that taste can also return, and not simply yearning. Thank you, Maharaj. Very nice question, Prabhu. I was really appreciating your question. Thank you. Any questions from devotees on this? Really amazing topic. Just going down the list here. Marge, I have a question. And when you were speaking, Marge, and I made a note of it, uh, you, you, <clears throat> you said engage, one needs to engage in devotional service and practice of Krishna consciousness. And what immediately hit me, Marge, is, is devotional service and practice of Krishna consciousness separate or together? And what is practice of Krishna consciousness? Like, what does it entail? Well, you can say in one sense they're the same, but in another sense, devotional service is the pure energy of the spiritual world, which is an expansion of Srimati Radharani. And practice of devotional service is also, and the practice of I mean, Krishna consciousness is devotional service, but we haven't come to the stage of the purity. So for a, just for a slight semantical uh, explanation, you might see a little difference in those two terms, but ultimately they're the same. Krishna consciousness, devotional service is the same. But one you might say is practice and the other one is simply the purity of that spiritual energy. Use that as devotional service. <clears throat> Sometimes we say mixed devotional service, but that's the practice of Krishna. The devotional service is pure because it's the internal energy of the Lord. So Marge, in order for us to get to the stage of pure devotional service, which practice of Krishna consciousness is like the prerequisite Marriage? Uh, uh, I guess you might say if you're if you need to take a shower, you get in the shower and you start, you know, getting clean. So that's the practice. And when you're clean, that's the that's the result. Not much difference. This different stages. Thank you, Marge. That that really helped. It is just that when you use the sentence "practice of Christian consciousness and devotional service," it really rang a bell in my mind. I said, "Wow, that's pretty powerful." 
Thank, thank you, March. Thank you. Any thank questions? You. Yes, March. Hare Krishna. <laughs> thank you. Any questions from devotees? Um, yes, Raj Prabhu. Questions from yesterday's class, day before yesterday. We are eager to hear the nectar. Go ahead, Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Raj, in the UK, we're celebrating Gadada Pandit's appearance day today. So I wanted to ask, is there anything special or anything specific that devotees can pray to Gadada Pandit to get special mercy or blessings in any specific area? <laughs> Gadada Pandit was completely obedient to Lord Chaitanya. Gadada Pandit was a, was a combination of Vrindavaneshwari and Lalita Saki. He was actually Radharani with an element of Lalita Saki. That same Radharani appeared now as Gadadhar Pandit, but in the mood, in a different mood. In the material, in the in her lila with Krishna and Vrindavan, she is both uh, uncontrary and contrary. But as Gadadhar Pandit, she is simply uncontrary. Her mood is different, very submissive to Lord Chaitanya. Her mood is a little different. So we can pray for that mood. We want to be very submissive to the desires of the Lord. Thank you, Maharaj. The daughter Pandit was very simple and very unassuming. He liked to read Srimad Bhagavatam. He was an expert cook. When Lord Chaitanya came to his place to take prasadam, the Lord glorified both the cook, the prasadam, and the Lord. The Lord was very pleased with the bhakti that he was tasting from the Daha Pandit's cooking. Oh, so, yeah. Become become an expert cook for Krishna. Become an become expert in understanding Srimad Bhagavatam. That was Gadadhar Pandit. He also served the Lord by worshiping the Lord, the deity that the Lord gave him, Sota Gopinath. And Prabhupada said we should aspire to be expert at one particular service in Krishna consciousness. We should focus on a particular service and become expert in that service. And one of the characteristics of a devotee, 26 qualities of a devotee, well, he's expert. So can we aspire to be expert in a service that we have no ability in? Why would you want to do that? Because it just sounds something like a service that you you like appreciate being very expert in. Well, it's better to work according to your nature and choose and uh, engage in service accordingly. And that way, you, your expertise will be more easily, um, uh, what would you say, un, uh, un, unveiled, available because it's your nature. Why choose something that's difficult? You can, if that's the instructions of your spiritual master, then you can do that. Sometimes the spiritual master gives instructions that are a little difficult for a devotee and asks them to do that service. And the devotee will have to think 
Of course, if they achieve that, that is glorious. Hey, thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you, Raj Prabhu. Yes, Sridhi, go ahead. Thank you, Ansia. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for another powerful, powerful class. Um, I understand that we must come to the point of no material desires. Anya bhilashita shunya. But at the moment, we are full of so many different desires, attachments, entanglements, etc. So how do we either eliminate those material desires or purify them or dovetail them in Krishna consciousness? What is the method to overcome these tendencies? One, this, the process of devotional service is the method. But if you want the fast track, we, there is a fast track too. It's like when you go to the airport and you go in line to go to security, they have one section called the fast track. And it's for specialized people who who have applied for such things. And they go through real easy without all the hassle of the security. So go for the fast track. And what is that? And that is Maharaj? That is developing a, a, an attachment for chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Not just chanting. Just, you have to develop an attachment. That's the fast track. And another, there's another aspect to the fast track, preach Krishna consciousness. And that is Maharaj. That's a little bit that's a little bit dualistic because in preaching Krishna consciousness, if you're not careful, you could also go down. It's a risk to preach Krishna Why can you go down? Because you may also get attached to the external environment again through the process of associating with the external environment through the process of preaching. And I saw that happen many times in our Krishna consciousness. The preaching, we some people have fallen down because of that. Of course, they're not lost, but at least for some time, they are outside of devotional service. But chanting the holy name, of course, leads you to the desire to, ex to expand the holy name by giving it to others. So Guru Maharaj, my being here in America is actually distracting me from devotional service because I'm thinking, oh, this is so nice. The roads are so smooth. There's no noise. It's so clean. Everything is organized. Oh my gosh, like a breath of fresh air. Oh, this is so wonderful. So am I going down? That's not true everywhere in, in America. <laughs> Depends where you are. <laughs> same, same with Mayapur. It's just some places that are so nice, peaceful, quiet, and you can focus. And then if you go other places in Mayapur, you're in, you know, Grand Central Station. <laughs> So to make that comparison is really not correct because in any in, in, in the Mayapur, you can find those same places. But that's not the goal, is to be peaceful. Peaceful is that you know, people go to sleep just to be peaceful. <laughs> it's not the goal. I think what you can do is when you're in the house of Srimati, you can learn how to cook. That would be good. You look so happy there. You must be getting good prasadam. <laughs> wonderful prasadam, wonderful association. I'm being mollycoddled, pampered, uh, beyond uh, imagination. 
and I could just uh, be here only, except that I have preaching to do, Guru Maharaj. I'm doing preaching program, believe me. I'm not just sitting here and uh, twiddling my thumbs. I'm being engaged in devotional service like that, but I'm just wondering whether this is, I'm skating on thin ice over here again. Well, you know, finish up and then get back. Don't change the ticket. <laughs> thank you thank you for protecting me thank you so back much. to the battlefield <laughs> yes namrata go ahead Hare krishna please accept my humble obeisance to all glories to shri prabhupada uh guru Mahal, my question is about chanting uh I feel a lot of, uh, not every time, but many times I feel gratitude when I am chanting. Is that a right move? You're feeling grateful while chanting? Yes. That's very good. That's nice. That gratefulness is, a, is an expression of, of uh, bhakti. That's nice. But don't, don't, you know, make it too extensive. We spend time expressing gratefulness and in the less time I'm chanting. Mm. So I should come back to the sound vibration, but it's okay to feel that gratitude. Yeah, even while you're chanting, you can feel grateful for the opportunity to chant. An opportunity to receive Krishna's mercy through the holy name. And that mood can be simultaneously along with your, your chanting. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, Thank, yeah. You. Thank you. Gratefulness is a very exalted quality. Very exalted. Those who are grateful are always, always happy. Those who are ungrateful are never happy. <laughs> nice question, Namrata. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, yes. Srimati, go ahead. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Um, please accept my humble obeisance. Um, you were talking about um, uh, like people dreaming uh, having their own time, relaxing time, and uh, um, and also like uh, they usually when we talk to people, um, they want a, a nice retirement life in a farm area, or I want to spend time with doing my hobbies. Um, I want to do like this, like that. They'll have so much uh, plans for the future. Um, so that is obvious because we live in the material world and uh, we we see like that or we think like that but we don't know about actual spiritual world. So if we preach to anyone um, that about the spiritual world or to tell, even if I want to tell also, first of all, I should know, right? Um, what should it will be like uh, in the spiritual world? Because whatever we see with our, uh, in this, uh, in surroundings of us, um, it's like, um, we, we can't compare it with the spiritual world. That's what I meant. So how to explain that, um, Guru Maharaj, like um, how to actually envision that, how the spiritual world will be? Well, most people will never understand. We, we don't even really fully understand either. So generally don't preach like that. I mean, if they ask something in that regard, you can say something. That this the world there is, there's no birth, no death, there's no disease, no age. Uh, there's no Joe Biden. <laughs> so you, you can say that yeah, in the spiritual world, you, you, you generally we don't preach like that. We just tell, explain to people the importance of uh, that if you want to be happy, here's the process. We keep it simple. As they ask questions, we can respond to their questions accordingly. 
But even in responding, we should be very careful not to go into areas which somehow or other are way beyond our understanding and the air, and for them also. We don't talk about Krishna's pastimes for the non-devotees. Yeah, as good as it's not about non-devotees, just neophytes. Um, I'm doing a reading group for Bhagavad Gita. And when we are reading the purports, um, usually we get the concept of going back to Godhead and as Srila Prabhupada mentions in the purports, right? So at that time, um, nobody asked yeah. anyone, but I was I was just thinking in that way that if I if I want to tell anyone um, about this, going back to Godhead, so how it will be? Yeah. So we, we, we covered that in, in the class. Anasuya brought up the third canto, 15th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> Sorry, I missed that part. Okay. Yeah. In, in that chapter from verse 14 onward, there's a nice description of the spiritual world. That's by Kunta. Okay. And in, 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 the, uh, in the works of Rupa Goswami, and also Raghunath Das Goswami, you get an insight of the the uh, the um, Vrindavan world. The Vrindavan world is very simple, it's like one big forest. Where there are cows, nice building, cows, and beautiful people. <laughs> Everything is. Yeah, everything is chintamani. So one of the things that we hear also about the spiritual world, which Prabhupada says, is that if you go to a tree in this world and you want a particular item, you have to go to that tree that gives that item. But in the spiritual world, the trees are kopaviksha trees. And they can fulfill any desire. You can go to a mango tree and get bananas. So, Prabhupada talks about that. You know, the trees that are wish fulfilling for you. These are little descriptions that you can use. Them. And you can refer to that third canto, the fifth chapter, the descriptions of the Vaikutan. Going to the tenth canto, the tenth canto, I'm sorry, the tenth canto, and the canto. You find descriptions of the Bhagavad Gita. Yes, good nurse. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, sir. Srimati. Yes, Namrata, go ahead. Hare Krishna. Uh, so, Krumaraj, I wanted to ask uh, when we hear about the pastimes of Goswamis, um, usually when we narrate it to children, uh, it happens that sometimes they go in that mood. When we narrate uh, the pastimes of Goswamis, and uh, when they are kind of interesting, the the kids go in the mood. So is it? And sometimes it happens they tend to imitate them in a playful way. So is it is it a good idea that they imitate them? Yeah. If they, imitate, okay. if they imitate long enough, they'll become like that. <laughs> so I was just wondering that because this, a lot of time it happens to my son. <laughs> yeah. Ever since you have narrated the pastime of, ever since you have narrated the pastime of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, visiting uh, South India, uh, he decided to uh, visit South India, and what happens with the associates? They are, uh, they all are like having, uh, you know, debates that why can't we go with uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and uh, that why why you can come with us? Yeah. So yeah, we should so learn many, we should learn from these. Yeah, so my son is very much in, uh, attracted by that, uh, in, and he keeps narrating, Good. and he keeps uh, um, imitating. Mm -hmm. so I was just thinking on this. 
Imitating success is success. <laughs> thing is, we, in, in the material world, we imitate something that is miserable. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be successful for us. <laughs> Yeah, they say child is the father of man. The statement goes. Thank you, Romans. You're lucky to have such a nice son. Yes. Yes, Romans. He he get he one day he was getting that danda and uh, he was getting it everywhere and my husband was like, why are you carrying this all the way? I mean, wherever you are going. So he he's answering. Okay, this is one of my belongings. <laughs> what did he say? So, he said what? He said this is. He said this is my belonging. Oh okay. <laughs> so he was trying to imitate uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah. And then he he is very much attracted to uh, Nityananda. As he bro he breaks the danda and then he tries to imitate all such things. I have a disciple who is a lady. I won't mention her name, but she went into her past life in a very expert way. She got the best. She was a sannyasi in her previous life, <laughs> and uh, she is very renounced in this life. <laughs> Extremely renounced, way beyond anything that I can even conceive of. And so, yeah, and then when she did that and explained, yeah, and then, so this was her previous life was just, you know, spilling over into this life. That's the way it is. Life is successive, both in the material world, both in the material qualities and in the spiritual qualities. Yeah. Thank you, Namrata. Yes, Raj Prabhu. Okay. Uh, Maharaj, when we were chanting in New Vrindavan, it was so easy, it was so natural, it was so wonderful. And then go back home or to the place where we normally live. And it becomes a lot of effort, you have to put so much effort and it's still nowhere near as wonderful. So what to do, Maharaj? Create Vrindavan where you are. That's so How do I do that? Ask somebody who knows. I don't know. <laughs> you can ask Pariksha, he'll tell you. <laughs> How to do that? It's easy. Make your mind Vrindavan. You just keep hearing, and hearing and chanting is very tough. You'll get there. You want to develop a habit, you know? And every minute, when we're outside of the association of devotees, we have a choice of what to do. So how, what are you going to choose? And another thing that helps Raj Prabhu is also, um, I remember this question was asked by one devotee to Mother Gita who gives class on the, on the other days. Um, and she's a disciple of Gopal Krishna Swami and her spiritual master told her, make your home. She, she said that she tried to, um, uh, after she retired, she wanted to uh, go to Vrindavan and just settle down because she's finished with her job. And Gopak Krishna Swami said, why are you so selfish? Go back and preach in Atlanta <laughs> and make your home Vrindavan. And that's exactly what she did. She returned back to the U.S. and she made her home into Vrindavan. And what she did was she 
you know, pictures, Krishna conscious paraphernalia around her. And she used her home as a home for preaching. And she would conduct Gita classes, you know, uh, any kind of, you know, Krishna conscious classes during the week. And and she said what what also helped us, you know, when what helped us, I you know, and, and it's, you know, not I'm still learning is when we play Prabhupada's uh, chanting, Japa, that always helps. It really helps us to, it purifies just hearing Prabhupada's voice. It's so beautiful every day. Just playing that, get, getting on the Japa calls or Japa Sanghas every morning. Then you slowly make your home and your environment Vrindavan. Yeah, I was, at, I was at many places around the world. One place that I used to go to regularly, they had these speakers that were built into most of the rooms in the house. And it was a constant playing of transcendental sound vibrations, either kirtans and sometimes lectures. But mostly it was always kirtan or bhajans, constantly, 24 hours, <laughs> 24 hours. I just came back from a place in Cincinnati where they had this yeah, little little device that was playing Prabhupada's Japa constantly. Yeah, I know another devotee, he came back from Vrindavan. He brought many of the uh, artifacts from Vrindavan, pieces of grass, trees, various sections of holy places to put it all around his room. Pictures. Um, no, you know, get transcendent. Pictures are very important. Very nice. And uh, yeah, burn incense or some sweet smelling fragrance. Huh. You can do it. Thank you. Thank you very much. All but, right. I hope you have the desire. If you have the desire, you'll do it. If you don't have the desire, you won't do it. Yes, I'm doing some of those things already, but you've given me some suggestions for more things I can do. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, there's a lot you can do. In fact, people can walk into your home and think it's Vrindavan, and if you actually develop it, Yay. Thank you so much for the wonderful question, Raj Prabhu. Any more last minute questions before um, we end this class? Anything that you would like to ask, clarify from this class or from previous classes? Marge, would you like to end with a round of chanting? Or would, or... Yay. <laughs> I didn't even think of it, but thank you for thinking of it. <laughs> thank you, Maharaj. So happy because that's what I was going to do when we closed anyway. So. <laughs> okay, let me get my beads and we're off. If I somehow go over one round, please excuse me. No problem, Marge. It's fine. <laughs> you, can, you can all uh, exit whenever you feel like, but I might be on for a little longer than you. No problem, Marge. <laughs>